Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to show you not only how to create, but also how to upload and use Vect Easy. So once again, we're going to create some art, we're going to upload some art, and I'm going to be giving you some general tips if you want to go ahead and get started. So Vect Easy is a website where you can go ahead and actually create and upload different uh, print, uh, images. Okay, so prints, uh, it could be quotes, it could be PNGs, JPEGs, it could even be vector files if you wish. Um, the website VectEasy is, like I said, a place kind of like an Adobe stock where you can sell all kinds of different images. The cool thing about how you get paid with VectEasy is that as a seller on VectEasy or as a contributor, might I, might I say, because that's really the correct terminology, as a, as a contributor, you can contribute free and pro type images. The way you can get paid is, of course, you'll get paid a flat fee for every pro image you sell. And the way you get paid for free images is based on the amount of downloads that you have accumulated. So the current uh, range that they're currently paying for, I believe, is about 5 dollars for every 250 free downloads so when we do upload different images you can discern between whether you want it to put it out for free or whether you want to put it out as a pro uh you know image and you could see i could do a general search for example for the keyword tiger on vect easy here and you have free images like this for example and if we go back we could take a look and there should be a image with a pro banner or like a little pro logo on it so if I click something like this you can see it has a pro image and once again you can get paid for both so it's a nice opportunity to upload to and one of the best things of all that make Vect Easy a great opportunity if you want to go ahead and get started is you can go ahead and upload your print-on-demand designs. And if you look here, these, this is an example of a print-on-demand design, right? To me, at least. This is an example. Where was it? We just passed by. This is another example of a print-on-demand designs. Uh, a lot of people who watch my YouTube channel know that I have uploaded a lot of print-on-demand content, and you probably make print-on-demand designs on a daily basis. And you can go ahead and upload them to Vect Easy. So they're very flexible as to what they accept. And uh, I highly recommend you go ahead and get started. If you want to get started, let's go ahead and continue with this tutorial. So the first thing that you have to do with Vect Easy is actually getting signed up. So all you have to do is go to slash contributors and you'll be able to access a place where you can apply to be a contributor. Now the application is really not that difficult. All you have to do is sign up, verify your license or your drive or your ID really. It doesn't have to be your driver's license. They have a bunch of opportunities to verify different things. And then after you verify who you are, then you're going to create a profile. After you create your profile, then all you have to do is start uploading. And you can see here this is the upload button, okay? This is the data button. This is the pending review button right here. This is the approved, and this is the not approved. I went ahead and create a completely brand new account for you guys here so that I could show you how this works from scratch and ideally how you would do it. Something that I'll also add with Vect Easy is that it is a non-exclusive license agreement. When you go ahead and create different art, with VectEasy, you do not have to exclusively perform or put your artwork on there. And what I mean by exclusively, exclusively means is that there are no exclusivity rights. Meaning, if you take your art and you upload it to VectEasy, you can also upload it to another site freely as, as much as you want. And the reason why, you know, that's allowed is because once again, there is a non- exclusivity agreement, which just means that if you upload something, they're not going to uh, force you to not upload it anywhere else. So it's a nice thing to have. And 
You can kill two birds with one stone if you currently upload to Adobe Stock. You can also upload to VecDeasy at the same time. You can, you know, if you upload to Redbubble, and maybe you have some designs if you want to potentially make double income or just try at least to take some works and put it there, it's perfectly fine. Something that I will warn and say is that the thing that takes the longest is really just the uh, sign-up process, you know, creating the account, all that kind of nonsense. It's the thing that's the longest. It's kind of annoying to do, but uh, hey, it's just part of the business, right? So let me go ahead and show you what you can do firstly. So I have a folder here of different images that I have and that I've created today. And this is, you know, just some random photo, uh, photos. And I'm, I'm just going to take and drag and drop an image into this section here. And there's a few f rules as to what you can upload. And actually, they have these tips that are actually really, really useful when it comes to uploading. So you can see how I just uploaded an image and it was perfectly allowed. And all I have to do is click on this add data button so that it could head over to my add data section. Now, I'm not going to click on that just yet because I want to explain to you what kind of images or what kind of content that you can upload. So let's go ahead and head over to this photo section. So as a JPEG, right, you can upload photos, but more importantly, they have to be JPEG type. So .jpg or .jpeg. Um, that is very important because if you upload a PNG, a .png, if it is not transparent, it will be rejected, okay? And you can see here this image was accepted because it has this green check mark. If it doesn't have the green check mark, it's going to have like a red X, and usually it will tell you why. All you have to do is take your mouse, hover over, and see if it was kind of approved to be uploaded. Not to be published on the marketplace, but just simply to be approved. Okay, and um, <clears throat> we have here a minimum resolution of four megapixels and a maximum of 50. So I'm not sure how many megapixels the image I just uploaded was. Maybe it's 12, 13 megapixels, but it was uploaded here or megabytes rather, um, and it fits the range. So no less than four megapixels and no greater than 50 megapixels. Okay. And um, here we have vectors. So vectors have many different formats. Two of the most well-known formats is the EPS format. And then we also have the SVG format. So here they're accepting the EPS format only. This is what they state. And the minimum image size is 4 megapixels. The maximum image is 25 megapixels. Now, a lot of people have uh, told me this before, and they say, do you transfer your images into vectors? And it's very, very rare, guys, that I actually do something like that. I usually just simply upscale my images, you know, nine times out of 10. So once again, it's very rare that I'll sell vectors, but keep in mind, it's actually probably a benefit for you to sell vectors because there's a certain audience who are looking for vectors. There are people who use Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, whatever the case may be, and they want to use vector files. Maybe they're using Inkscape, whatever kind of software that works well with vector files. Uh, you can even upload vectors into Canva, but that has nothing to do with this conversation. There are basically, a, there's a market out there who's looking for that kind of stuff. So if you have a lot of vectors and you want to potentially upload them, it might be a great opportunity for you to do so. Let's go ahead and read a little bit further. We, ha we can upload also videos. So MP4 or .mov videos. Um, I personally recommend the MP4 format just simply because it is a little bit lighter load on the computer. Uh, if you have some really high graphic type of content, it could take a little bit too long to handle. And not all computers are able to handle uh, some really big loads like that. So MP4, typically the best. Here we have MP4. We have the video has to be a minimum of five seconds in length, uh, and it could be 4K and HDR preferred. So, you know, as basically as good a graphics as you could possibly get it to will be the best. And maximum file is 10 gigabytes. And of course, I already mentioned this, PNG formats. 
Um, you absolutely can upload PNGs, not just JPEGs. I know a lot of people think they can only upload JPEGs and not PNGs, but anything PNG you can upload, it just sim simply has to have an actual transparent background in it for it to be considered the PNG when it's uploading and approved, okay? You can put it in a PNG format, but if it doesn't have that transparent factor, they might not accept it, okay? Um, they also accept PSDs, okay, which, you know, is in the vector family, but um, PSDs basically works for... Uh, also, they accept Adobe Creative Cloud versions. I personally have not messed with this at all. Never uploaded a PSD, at least not to my knowledge. Maybe, maybe potentially one of the ones that I've uploaded here pending review on this new account. And once again, this is new account. This is for demo purposes. So you can feel free, search for the account as much as you want. Um, doesn't really bother me. I just simply don't use this account. And this was just for the tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. So to upload an image, all I have to do is I can drag and drop or I could just click the upload more button. And once again, I recommend sticking to a file, okay? Um, or a folder and just adding your different images in there. Now we will go over how to create different images effectively for VecDeasy. So I'll show you that in just a minute. But for example, this is an image uh, that was created by a stable diffusion application. I'll just take it, drag it and drop it, and it will slowly upload. You can see here how it has this little upload bar. And then once it's complete, it's complete. And then I'll just go hit add data and it will take me to the rest of the images that I have currently uploaded. Okay, so this image is here, and then we're gonna go into uh, all the other images. So there's many different ways to create images for VectEasy. Um, not even just for VectEasy, but just selling AI stock photography in general, you can go ahead and do it many ways. I'll show you two different strategies right now. So the first strategy is just GPT. It's very simple. Um, you could see here, these images probably look familiar because they were just on my other screen. Um, I went ahead and used my RB sticker maker. Uh, if you're not familiar with the RB sticker maker, I created a GPT uh, plugin called the RB sticker maker. Um, I could go ahead and show you how it works. So basically just search, uh, go for your explore GPTs, type in RB or RB here, sticker maker. And there it is. Okay. You, all you have to do is click on it. It will bring you this empty dashboard, I guess you could say. And you just type in a request for a sticker. So I might type in, for example, a, let's just say a cute, uh, Santa, with presence sticker, something like that. And it will go ahead and create it, okay? And once it's created, it will create it in a certain style that matches how we trained this little plugin here, okay? So after you create your image, you are going to have to upscale it. This is one of the things is that the format from what I'm seeing right now that GPT comes out with is a WEBPG format, so a WebPG format. And the Vect Easy doesn't actually accept this kind of format. So if you click, go ahead and click download here, and then you drag it and drop it. So I'll just kind of show you what I mean. If we go over into my downloads folder and I drag it and drop it, it's not going to, or excuse me, let me go here to my upload and drag it and drop it here it should fail. Yep, it fails because it's not a correct format. WB thing you're going to have to do with this style of image and you could see here because it is that WEBP format is you're going to have to convert it into a JPEG and then once you do that you're going to have to upscale it. So once again that could seem like a lot of effort at least for somebody like me. So what I like to do is I like to simplify things. I'm pretty sure you guys like to do the same thing. So what I will do is usually to make things easier, I'll just use the stock bubbler plugin tool. So if you're familiar, here we have botsandapps.com. Okay, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and check it out. But there's a tool right here called the stock bubbler tool. And basically what it is, is an AI powered uh, 
tagger and image generator for stock photography. So you can use the images created within it. And you could go ahead and access the website. They have more information. And I actually created two videos on my channel on how to use it. But basically, what we do is we open up the tool and we go over here to the image generation section. We can use different keywords from these lists to create an image. And then we'll go ahead and create it. So for example, I can create a whimsical, colorful, pastel style uh, beach, beach portrait, right? And I can hit submit and it will take that information and it'll go ahead and create the image for me. And once again, if you're thinking about using this tool, I highly recommend you watch my other videos on how it's used, okay? Uh, so I'll take the image, I'll hit download, and notice that when it downloads, it downloads as a .png, which basically simplifies the task for me. I can take that .png. If I wish to upscale it, I absolutely can. I don't have to, but I can take the image and I can upscale it. And then not only would I upload it to, for example, here in VectEasy, but I would also upload it to other sites as well. And that's kind of the benefit of the upscale is that I could use that one image in many different platforms while increasing my income overall. So if that image sells on VectEasy 10 times a year, and then it sells on Adobe Stock four times a year, and then it sells maybe once on Redbubble, I have that image used in many different parts because it's large, it has good graphics, etc. But that's just simply one example, okay? Now, with those two different examples of images, once you accumulate your images, you can add them here. There's also another place where you can create images called Leonardo AI, and I have shown other videos and tutorials about Leonardo. If you guys want to see more, I'm happy to show more. This is the actual platform. Um, you can kind of replicate a different, uh, you know, like a, a prompt. So I can go over here and hit remix, and I can go ahead and click generate, and it will generate images based on that prompt for me. So once again, guys, any kind of resource that you want that I've been mentioning in this video, I'll just leave every resource in the description box down below, even the Vect Easy uh, contributor page as well. Okay. So everything is in the link down below. You can go ahead and sign up. All right. As well as Leonardo, as well as everything else. So now that you have the ability to create your images, which we'll talk while this is, there you go, it's created. Once an image is created, um, you can take the image and go to the upload. So let's go ahead and just do a little uh, kind of like a tutorial. We'll take the image, we'll take the new one that just downloaded, for example, and simply drag it and drop it here. And if it fully uploads and everything passes, it will pass, but this has not passed. Let's see what the reason here is. The reason says the up the photo you uploaded must be at least four megapixels. So an image like that is not large enough. It needs to be upscaled, which is why I say upscaling is very important. If you need to learn how to upscale, please click the link in the description. I'll have a video that says learn how to upscale. You click on that, you're going to see everything about that, okay? So the reason why my videos here, or excuse me, my uh, images here worked is because they're all upscaled. So now that you know how to do all these things, I'm going to show you now how to actually tag or how I would tag. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I like to firstly upload images with similar characteristics. So you can see from this image of this Lamborghini to this image of this BMW, it's all cars, right? And the style is similar. So what I'll do is I'll click here and then I'll click here and it will access all the different selection of images together. So those two clicks now basically select everything in between. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to see the similar details between them and just apply it here. So let's say, for example, I wanted to sell these images, then I would put them on the pro license. For me, an image like this, for example, I don't mind it being free, so I'll give it for free and I'll put the free image. So all I have to do is click on these to select whether it's free or pro. After I select the license of the image, okay, I'm going to go ahead, like for example, for this one I'll just select free, 
and if that's the license, then I'm going to select the category. So although the images are in a JPEG format, right, for me, they still fit in the PNG category because they are images. So every single image here is a JPEG. Not, not a single image here is a PNG format. However, it comes up as PNG because it's just an image, a photo, okay? Uh, you may see something different here depending on what you upload. Perfectly fine. Trust me. No, you know, there's no errors on that. Just leave that the way it is. And then here we have if the image was generated by AI. In my case, I have it selected because all these images were, right? And I'll take this image and I'll select what kind of AI was created. So if you're going to be using the stock bubbler tool, and once again, I've shown how to use a stock bubbler tool in multiple I think two or three videos in the past, which once again, I will link in the description box down below for you to check out. Um, this is a Dolly format. So I would select Dolly here, okay? So created by Dolly, it's Dolly, okay? And then what I would do is I would give it a title. So notice how it starts off with AI generated. If it doesn't start off with AI generated, that means you haven't ticked this, okay? It's important to tick it because you should tell them if something is made by AI. After it's AI generated, I would just write something uh, like what it is. So I'll write cute lemon slice, vibrant, let me go ahead and click that, vibrant colors, just like this, all right? So pretty basic, nothing too crazy, super simple, all right? Once I create my title, now it's time for my keywords. Now remember, my keywords are going to be the reason why people find my image. And of course, I want as many people to see my image as possible because it will increase the amount of times it's being used. So I wanna give a quick demonstration here to show you what I'm talking about. So if I go to Vect Easy, right? And we just go to the front end, not the contributor end, but the front end, and I search for something like a lemon, all right? Let's kinda of see together the differences and what I can potentially produce. So here we have just a, what seems to be almost like a vector style image, like super basic, maybe even clip art style. Here we have some more images that look pretty decent, you know, nothing too crazy. We have like a lemon pattern here, but I think mine is a little bit different in the group. And it has multiple categories it could potentially fit in. I think we can all agree about my specific image. So first thing that I want to do is I want to think of some words that represent the style of this. And remember, we're going to apply keywords to multiple images at once. So theoretically, if I was working with these cars, once again, I would select through all of them. And then what I would do is after I select all the cars, I'm going to be adding keywords that represent them. Now you could actually see I've done that already. And I could, I, for all of these images, they all have similar keywords. So like from here to here, right, they all have the word sports cars. They all have the word cars, racing cars, race cars, race car. Those are some words, for example, that represent the image. And then what I did was I created the different images uh, or I created the different keywords that represent the different images. So for example, this car here is a GTR. So I wrote GTR in the tags. This one is a Lamborghini, so I wrote Lamborghini or Lambo, right? Those are just some keywords. Now, I have the ability to create 50 different keywords. That's a lot, and my brain is not capable of providing that information. I just simply can't do it. So I'm gonna have the AI kind of help me out here. So I'm gonna take, let's just say from here to here, and I'm going to open up the stock bubbler tool and I'm going to just type in words that represent what these are. So I'll type in something like drag car. Okay. And I'll hit search. And what it will do is it will provide me different keywords that are somewhat associated with that topic based on various different stock photography sites. So it kind of interlinks the AI plus the stock photography sites and see what are the most best options of keywords to be applied in a situation for the word drag car. So for the word drag car, we have racing, speed, competition, uh, engine, customization, exhaust, tires, nitrous oxide. 
these could all potentially work, you know, depending on the situation. So I could take these and I could just go over here and I could paste them just like that. Let's just say I think of another keyword, like I think of sports car, right? And because of the, the different keywords that I picked, there might be some overlap in terms of the results, which is perfectly fine. But we have all kinds of cool different keywords. We have luxury, speed, performance, exotic, supercar, racing, convertible, engine, design, handling. These are words that I would say about 70% of these keywords I would not be able to think of myself. So I'm just going to take copy and paste. And it's not so much that I wouldn't be able to. If I sat down for long enough, I'd be able to. But the whole point is I don't want to spend too much time doing this. So notice how many more keywords I added here. This could be easily another 25, 30 keywords, right? I'm not counting, but you get my point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and click save. Now what this is doing is I'm saving the extra work for each and every individual keyword or design rather, or image better to say, not really design, but image. And after I do that, I need to just do a general lookup. I recommend everybody do this because when you look at your images, you just want to see, did I complete every aspect that I want to properly? Because once you hit that submit button, unfortunately for some websites, you can't really go back and change some things. So for example, I have here in my pending section, I actually should save my work. Hold on. Let me click cancel. Let me hit save. I'll click pending here and I'll hit OK. For my pending content, right, I have this image. I can't really go here and click on anything that will allow me to edit it. So once the job is done, it's done. So I have to make sure that, you know, everything is settled the way I want it to. And notice here, by the way, it says there was a problem uploading your files. Indeed, there was. These are errors because simply the images don't measure up to what's required. And once again, it has to do with the upscaling. So if you're familiar with what upscaling is, then great. If you don't know, all it is is just taking an image, enlarging it to the point where there's no errors in the image. Uh, because normally when people enlarge regular images, they're called raster files. And those raster files get graphically damaged. They'll get pixelated. They'll get blurry. They just won't look right anymore. So... You have to enlarge the image in a way where it doesn't get damaged, and there are certain special softwares that can do that. So anyways, what I got going on here is I have these images of these sports cars. And once again, I'm going to go through and look through everything. Now, when the image is ready right, to be submitted, it will have this little green dot on the corner that has like a check mark on it. So basically, I have in this example, I have some keywords right? And I actually recommend you fulfill your limit. Uh, you have some a title, you have the, what it was generated with, right? So Dolly, you have the category, which is an image in this case, and you have the license. That's all you need really in a segment like this. There's only one thing left if you want to address, which is the releases and references, but that's only if something is recognizable. So in terms of recognizability, usually it has to do with like people who are celebrities or something like that. I could hit this plus and I could search for things like McLaren, for example, because that's the kind of car. But, you know, I don't have any releases here. And to be clear, what a release is, is usually when you have a model you're taking a picture of, you do need their approval to take a picture of them. And you know, what you do is you attach a release to it or a company release. Sometimes it's not really a person. Sometimes it's a management group or a company. In the case of McLaren or like Lamborghini or something like that, this is open, open content type stuff because it's an item. Okay. Same thing with this. Like this is a picture of a blue lagoon from Iceland. It's all kind of open type of material. So there's no really requirement to have a release. So when the image is completed and all the requirements are fulfilled, you're going to see this little green dot. And what you're going to do is going to go over it. You're, I, I recommend this, like I said, to everybody. you got to go over everything that's submitted. Once you're ready, right, make sure you fulfill your tag requirements. I recommend, like I said, fulfilling the most of the 50, as much as you can. Especially if you have this tool, there's no reason why you shouldn't. And once again, it will help 
if you're uploading images in particular categories together in bulk. So if I'm going to have a picture of some cars, it's good to upload more than just one altogether so that I can click on all, you know, most of them in one shot and then submit them. Does that make sense? So once that's taken care of, it's time to actually submit for a review. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit for a review and I'm going to have to go through certain things here. So take a, let's take a look together about what it's requiring some of these guidelines. The first thing it says is I confirm that these files I am submitting meet Vecdeezy's guidelines. Well, let's click on some of those guidelines. The first guidelines are selecting or uploading the proper type. And for us, we definitely did upload the proper type because it wouldn't have been approved. As you guys saw earlier, it would not have been approved just like these files. Okay, so the files in the upload section, it wouldn't have been approved if if it wasn't any good. Right. The second thing is just tips and recommendations for keywords, things like that. They also have different keyword challenges, so they want you to create for different industries. But basically, if you're not stealing anyone's work, if you're tagging and title everything properly, okay, you should be pretty much good to go on the guidelines. And the guidelines, once again, about 80% of the guidelines that are actually important are taken care of during this section. Any kind of image that doesn't fit the right sizing or anything like that cannot be even uploaded. It will have this error. So in terms of the guidelines, you don't have to worry about that too much. So once again, when I click S submit for review, take a look at the guidelines, but this is what they specifically care about. The first thing is that if it's AI generated, it has to state that it's AI generated. It says here, AI generated. If applicable, AI generated content is appropriately marked photorealistic, non-illustrative, perfectly rendered, and technically flawless. So that's what they're kind of looking for here. If it's AI generated, first it has to be marked, but more importantly, it has to be, it could be either photorealistic, but it has to be perfectly rendered, meaning there can't really be some errors. For example, if I'm asking for a portrait to be made of a person, they can't have like three and a half eyes or they can't have two and a half fingers or something like that. Okay. Metadata. Metadata represents the titles and the keywords are in English. So what is metadata? Metadata is used for searching guys. Remember when I talked about when somebody searches for a certain keyword within Vecdeasy and you want to show up and that's why your tags are important because they help you show up for things. So for example, if somebody was to show up for McLaren 600 LT and they're also to search for nitrous oxide, there's a chance my McLaren will show up. Now I want you to understand something about combinations and this is actually a pro tip about Vecdeasy. The beautiful thing about Vecdeasy is that most people who search something, they're looking for something similar in their mind, but they don't know specifically what they want. So for example, if search somebody searching for a McLaren vehicle or a car, they might just type in McLaren, but they have a certain idea of how they want that McLaren to look like, and hence why they're going to scroll through the search. They might start searching for more things down the road to be able to narrow down their search. For me, I want to be able to predict everything that person is going to write down right in the search and I want to be able to pop up. The more keywords that I have that are related to what that person is going to search, the bigger chance I have showing up. And that's kind of how Vecdeasy's algorithm works. Not all platforms work this way. Vecdeasy is just very particular in that kind of way. Sometimes you don't need all the sales or all the downloads in the world on Vecdeasy to show up. So I want you to be aware of that, okay? So once I get these keywords or as much as I can that are related to what people might potentially be searching for, I'm now increasing my chances dramatically to be shown, okay? Now what I do is after I hit submit, I have to keep in mind that my, you know, we already talked about this, but the titles and the keywords are in English. That's important, okay? Next thing is the general submissions have to be free of trademark, copyright, intellectual property concerns. There's a lot that goes into intellectual property concerns, copyright, trademark. Firstly, you can't steal anybody else's work. So just because you like a style that somebody's doing or something like that, you can't really steal it. There's, an, there's no way you can absolutely do that. If you get close to somebody's style of other work, they absolutely can report you 
and it depends on the person who's studying, you know, the the um the complaint or the takedown request. So once again, I'm gonna recommend that you do not steal other people's work or even get close to what other people are doing. Just try to do your own thing. Secondly, when they also mention trademark and copyright, don't take pictures of, for example, the Nike logo and post it. That clearly has rights to other businesses. So you want things that are maybe a public kind of idea. If you're going to be taking pictures and you're going to be uploading photography, you know, things in the public are perfectly fine. Um, You know, basically just general trademark copyright laws. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go click here, I understand, and hit submit. And finally, when something is submitted, you're going to get a success message. One of your files have been submitted. Hit close window. Go over here to pending review. And there the file will be in the pending review. So you guys can see I made this account a little while ago just to prepare for a video like this. And hopefully more future videos on VectEasy. This is the demo account that I'm going to do that with. And you could see I have some different files here that have been waiting for approval. Don't worry. Based on how long an image can take for approval can take, you know, anywhere from three weeks to five weeks. Uh, they say here 21 days, but I have seen it take longer. You know, um, they don't specify either, is it business days or just general days. I personally believe it's business days because business days are from Monday to Friday. And that's a five day week, not a seven day week, which really does increase the the spectrum of the days. In fact, the first image that I uploaded was on January the 25th, 2024, and today is February 11th. So it's been a little while. Um, so give it time. Don't freak out if your images don't get approved right away. And my biggest tip to say with all this is when you're uploading, do not wait for images to be approved for you to upload your next batch. Okay? Don't wait for that. Uh, what you need to do is you need to keep hitting it. Now, this is a new account. So I think the first thing you have to do is you have to have 10 images or something like that uploaded in order for the account to be verified. And once again, don't quote me on that because uh, this is not my official account. I have an official account. And when I started uploading to my official account was a while ago. So not any time recent. So once again, don't hold me to that. I'm not 100% sure on that because it's been a while. I can't really remember. But uh, I believe you have to first pass the first stage of just 10 photos, kind of like your 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 uh, probationary state. Just upload the first 10, get approved on them, and then keep uploading, and they'll get approved again. So uh, this is it. This is the VectEasy tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'm happy to provide more solutions for you guys. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And let me know in the comments if you're going to go ahead and take up this platform and give it a shot. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching and peace out. Bye.